Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord's Weekend God's Life. So after God teaches us to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. He teaches us to pray, lead us not into temptation. And sometimes I wonder if it's not just to remind us that Christian life isn't linear. It, it isn't just a, a straight line, that we don't take the fifth petition, the forgiveness stuff, and just run one straight path in either one of two ways, that, that either onward and upward, that, that um, I am forgiven now and, and I can only ever build on that, that I only ever keep improving, that it only ever goes one way. I'll never fall back into what I was forgiven. I can only, you know, conquer one sin, then conquer another, then, then conquer another until basically I don't sin and Christian life is only measured in progress. Or, as a straight line on what we were doing in the first place. That, that since I'm forgiven, doesn't really matter what I do. I'm just going to keep on sinning because, you know, so shall we sin that grace may abound and then stop reading real quick before it says, by no means. Since I know I'm forgiven, I'll just do whatever I want. Don't worry about, you know, who your sins might possibly hurt or whether or not your God calls you to strive against the desires to do them. He does. Christian life can only be measured in absolute freedom to do whatever I want while yelling stuff about grace and only God can judge me. We are given this petition right after, forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us, so that we remember not just that we are forgiven, but that it is still dangerous down here. And so we are immediately taught to pray, lead us not into temptation. See, in the large catechism, Luther writes, We have now heard enough what toil and labor is required to retain all that for which we pray, and to persevere therein, which, however, is not achieved without infirmities and stumbling. Besides, although we have received forgiveness and a good conscience and are entirely acquitted, yet is our life of such a nature that one stands today and tomorrow false. See, Christianity is not linear. It is circular. It is not just keep on getting better and better and better than everyone else around you. And it's also not just keep right on sinning, because why not? Christianity is, is circular. It is a constant life of repentance, and that is by far the more painful thing. We are constantly in need of forgiveness, which God is constantly outpouring unto us. Christianity is constantly begging to be freed from temptation and then falling again. Christianity is war against sin, against the devil, against the world, against death itself. It is chaos. And I understand that it's just easier to pretend you don't sin anymore or that your sins don't matter. But they do so much that God would teach you to pray, lead us not into temptation. But at the exact same time, God calls us not to be too worried over the whole thing. And Lutherans, by and large, don't seem too perturbed. We recognize these evils. It's not that sin doesn't matter. It's that they are the very things that urge us to pray these temptations, to put our trust in the Lord, because that is where comfort comes from. There is no real comfort in beating the y'all behave drum of the law, and there is no real comfort in claiming that your actions should have no consequences at all while everything falls apart because you keep doing dumb stuff. You are not going to find confidence or comfort or hope in how you behave or what you feel or what you suffer or don't suffer in this life because sin breaks stuff. So God would teach us to pray, lead us not into temptation because comfort is really only found in the Lord. So as we are taught to pray, lead us not into temptation, we would realize God tempts no one. But we pray in this petition that God would guard and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our own sinful nature would not deceive us or mislead us into false belief, despair, and other great shame and vice. Although we are attacked by these things, we pray that we would finally overcome them and win the victory. Christianity is circular, that every day I wake up and do the same dumb stuff that I did before, and every day I realize that that's terrible and I try to not do it anymore, and every day I am broken down by the law and healed by the gospel, and every day it's over and over and over 
over again that the old Adam is drowned in the waters of my baptism and the new man daily emerges and arises to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. And so I pray ultimately that just the circle would finally be broken because Christianity isn't measured in getting better and better and better than everyone else. And Christianity isn't measured in doing whatever I want under the false auspice of grace. Christianity is measured in Jesus bringing us through death and unto resurrection again. So look to where he does this. Christianity is measured right here in your baptism. Look to the gifts that God gives you to endure this day as a forgiven child of God. Look to the gifts that he gives you that you might resist and flee from temptation. And above all, look to the gospel which actually yields the power to survive in this world and even be brought through it unto the glories of the resurrection which Christ himself has won for you. Our comfort is found here that even as we pray, lead us not into temptation, we might be shown all the places where God provides the rescue.